clavipectoral fascia guys the fascia which is extending from the clavicle and covering the pectoral muscle now i hope you all can appreciate this muscle over there that muscle is pectoralis minor that's a pectoralis minor muscle and since there is uh, there is a muscle present below the clavicle also that is subclavius so first of all i hope you can see this translucent fascia guys this translucent fascia here is called as a clavipectoral fascia so this fascia here is called as a clavipectoral fascia so the one question on the clavipectoral fascia is that what are the structures or what muscles are enclosed in it so there are two muscles enclosed in it one which will be below the clavicle somewhere here that muscle will be and that muscle is subclavius that muscle will be subclavius and one muscle is this that is pectoralis the question on the scapular anastomosis i've seen usually the questions are like this which of the following artery is not participating in the scapular anastomosis so if the question is asked on the scapular anastomosis you usually it's the question about the elimination here which of the following artery does not take part in the scapular anastomosis so guys this this art this muscle here is subclavius and that muscle here is the pectoralis minor that is pectoralis minor so that's one question here what muscles are enclosed in the clavipectoral fascia that's one question the two muscles are enclosed in the clavipectoral fascia the subclavius and pectoralis minor second question here what is the continuation of clavipectoral fascia now you can see this clavipectoral fascia is coming till the pectoralis minor but below that this portion hi guys this this portion here it is a continuation of the clavipectoral fascia and this is a fascia which actually pulls the floor of the axilla and make it dome shaped so we call it the suspensory ligament of the axilla this is the continuation of the clavipectoral fascia this is called as a suspensory ligament of axilla suspensory ligament of axilla that's a, another question here and that is the that ligament the suspensory ligament of axilla is the one which will keep the floor of the axilla dome shape if you look at the axilla axilla is not flat here we have a slightly dome over there and the dome is because of this ligament pulling it up and this ligament is the continuation of the clavipectoral fascia only that is this whole thing is a suspensory ligament let me just highlight that region this is a suspensory ligament of axilla third question and this was in fact the question asked in the in the exam was the structures piercing clavipectoral fascia now there are three things that you can make out from here one vein is going inside some arteries are coming out and you can see a nerve also and there is a lymphatic as well so we have one vein one artery one nerve one lymphatic so we have one 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 everything four structures are piercing the clavipectoral fascia guys the vein is cephalic vein the cephalic vein the artery which is piercing it and coming out is the thoracoacromial trunk thoracoacromial trunk guys thoracoacromial trunk is the artery which is coming from the second part of axillary artery it's a branch from the axillary artery the thoracoacromial trunk actually comes out and then it gives off multiple branches the nerve which is piercing it and coming out that nerve which is piercing it and coming out is the lateral pectoral nerve if you remember we just discussed lateral pectoral nerve is coming from the lateral cord of brachial plexus and that supplies pectoralis major muscle so it is coming out to supply the pectoralis major so we have four structures piercing it one is cephalic vein thoracoacromial trunk or artery lateral pectoral nerve and we do have some lymphatics also not shown in this image some lymphatics which are going toward the apical lymph node the some lymphatic which are draining the lymph into the apical group of axillary lymph node so that is also there so these are the four structures if the question is asked what structures are piercing the clavipectoral fascia you got to go with the cephalic vein thoracoacromial artery or you can say thoracoacromial trunk the nerve is lateral pectoral nerve and we have lymphatics which are draining the lymph into the apical lymph node so these are three questions guys you got to be ready with in the clavipectoral fascia muscles enclosed inside continuation of clavipectoral fascia and then finally the structures piercing clavipectoral fascia 
and uh, when it comes to the bone the upper end of the humerus is is again important here the upper end of the humerus i'll tell you why upper end of humerus and upper end of femur are important because upper end of humerus and femur they do uh, provides attachment to the major muscles of the shoulder region and the hip region here so all the gluteal muscles and all uh, the iliopsoas they are all inserted to the upper end of femur and look at the rotator cuff muscle deltoid and they are attached to the upper end of the humerus and that's the reason they they repeatedly asked question on the upper end of the humerus and the femur so my personal suggestion to you is that in the osteology of upper limb and lower limb do not skip this upper end of the humerus and the upper end of the femur in the lower limb which we i'll be discussing with you here so guys uh first of all look this is the humerus you are looking at from the anterior end and that's the humerus the posterior end here so when you look at the humerus from the anterior end what is to be noted here this the one which is placed more laterally here that is a greater tubercle and this is what with the one which is more anteriorly placed here this is a lesser tubercle greater tubercle and lesser tubercle and between the greater and lesser tubercle obviously that's a intertubercular sulcus that sulcus is called as a inter tubercular sulcus intertubercular sulcus let me start with this only guys this intertubercular sulcus this is intertubercular sulcus or you can also call it the bicipital groove intertubercular sulcus or bicipital groove now what is there in this intertubercular sulcus or bicipital groove as the name suggests bicipital groove so it is giving passage to the long head of biceps brachii long head of the biceps will be running through it and it's not only the long head of the biceps you will also see a branch from anterior circumflex humeral artery will also go into it anterior circumflex humeral artery will be here but there is a ascending branch of anterior circumflex humeral artery which will go into it so these are the two structures which you should remember which are coming which are running into what in the intertubercular sulcus here so we have a sorry we have this bicipital groove or intertubercular sulcus which is giving passage to the long head of the biceps coming down and then the anterior circumflex humeral artery a branch of anterior circumflex humeral artery will go through it above lesser tubercle it provides insertion to one muscle only and that muscle which is present in front is subscapularis one of the rotator cuff muscle guys that is subscapularis so muscle that is inserted the only muscle that you see inserted on the lesser tubercle is subscapularis going from the front here whereas when you look at the greater tubercle the muscles which are inserted to the greater tubercle can be can be seen better from the posterior side in the posterior side that's a greater tubercle guys you have impressions guys there are three in muscles inserted on three impressions here we have supraspinatus above then we have infraspinatus and then we have teres minor the sit muscles are present on the greater tubercle and the sequence is we got a supraspinatus there is a impression for supraspinatus then we have infraspinatus and then we have this teres minor teres minor and we all know that subscapularis and these three muscle collectively they are rotator cuff muscle here subscapularis is present anteriorly supraspinatus is above and the remaining two muscles are more at the back here the infraspinatus and teres minor but all the four muscles attached to the greater and lesser tubercle are the rotator cuff muscle they are the rotator cuff muscles what is also important here to remember that the i just said anterior circumflex humeral artery guys anterior circumflex humeral artery will be going like this and the posterior circumflex humeral artery will be present at the back now i'm just paying attention to this pch guys posterior circumflex humeral artery and anterior circumflex humeral artery both are the branches of axillary artery and they are in close relation to the surgical neck of humerus out of this the posterior circumflex humeral artery is seen running along with the nerve and that nerve is axillary nerve that nerve is axillary nerve it is important for us to remember in the upper limb and also in the lower limb when the nerve and artery are running close to each other their relations their close relation is important because they you get questions on them so a nerve that you see present on the surgical neck of humerus is the axillary nerve seen running with what artery posterior circumflex humeral artery with the posterior circumflex humeral artery 
in the floor of the bicipital groove here in the floor of the bicipital groove there are three muscles which are present here three muscle inserted here and that famous mnemonic we all know goes by a lady between two major so there are two major here and a lady in between the major which is on the medial side is actually the teres major it's the insertion of teres major on the medial side whereas on the lateral side it's the pectoralis major teres major and pectoralis major and of course the lady in between is nothing but the latissimus dorsi it's the insertion of latissimus dorsi the important thing is remember which one is medial which one is lateral here so pectoralis major the big muscle pectoralis major muscle is going more laterally here so that it can more effectively can cause the internal rotation so pectoralis major on the lateral lip on the medial lip of bicipital groove we have teres major and in between in the floor of the bicipital groove you will see the latissimus dorsi one more important relation guys that you, and let me just draw the axillary nerve that's a view from the posterior side so let me draw the axillary nerve and posterior circumflex humeral artery here that's the axillary nerve once again i'm just showing from the posterior view now that's the axillary nerve along with posterior circumflex humeral artery not only this guys you can see a groove over there also we all know that groove is called as a spiral groove or radial groove a very important groove that is called as a radial groove or spiral groove and this spiral groove as we know it gives passes to the radial nerve and along with radial nerve you will also see the profunda brachii artery will also run in there so here we have the profunda brachii artery it's a branch of the brachial artery only the profunda brachii artery and profunda brachii artery runs with what nerve with the radial nerve it runs with the radial nerve in what groove that is called as a spiral groove or radial groove guys this this groove here is called as a radial groove or spiral groove radial or spiral groove so these are some important facts that you should know about the upper end of the humerus here attachment to the greater tubercle to the lesser tubercle what is there in the bicipital groove what is related to the neck of the uh, the humerus what is the content of the the radial groove here and that a lady between two major that insertion here so this is this is a, a very important uh, there, there are like good four five questions in there and you can always expect expect a question from the upper end of the humerus as well as the upper end of the femur which we will also discuss in the lower limb part